hey, 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 good people. Grits or cream of wheat? Who the hell is racist? Has anyone ever asked, could they touch your hair? <laughs> Woo. Black Like Me. You're listening to Black Like Me with Dr. Alex G., a podcast that invites you to experience the world through the perspective of one black man, one conversation, one story, or even one rant at a time. Here's Dr. G. Black like me. 15, 18 years ago, I was invited to give a keynote on a college campus for African American History Month. And I woke up at about 5 a.m., several hours before my speech. I was inspired to let these college students know how much the thought of their education and their excellence and their ability to access the resources of America motivated their ancestors. I just thought that I want to connect them to history, not just in terms of fact, but I wanted them to know that our ancestors carried them in their dreams and our hearts. And so I wrote what became my closing part of my speech, but it really was a poem and it's entitled You're the Ones. And I just want you to listen to, to this, but also share this particularly with young African-Americans who struggle even in owning their own brilliance and maybe being one of a few African-Americans in their class or field or departments. I want you to help me to share this so that people are motivated to know that we have waited on them and their success for centuries. And we're so proud of who they are and what they are accomplishing. Again, this is called You're the Ones. You stand on the shoulders of great black men and women who believed in you. Let me tell you a little about these ancestors of ours. They've waited for you. They saw and looked forward to this day. You're the ones they were looking for. When black slaves were not allowed to gather and pray, they would often sneak off to the barn or the fields and get a huge black iron kettle. They would insulate the kettle with blankets and clothing and put their faces inside the kettles and groan towards heaven. They cried, they laughed, they sighed, they sang, and most importantly, they prayed. They prayed for liberty. They prayed for access. They prayed for opportunity. They prayed for freedom, but not just for themselves, but for you. Some knew that they'd never see it, but they had blind faith that you would. You see, you're the ones that they've been looking for. They were referred to as colored boy, girl, uncle, Annie, chattel property, Negro and worse. But they took it. They endured because they knew one day you'd be called doctor, professor, entrepreneur, attorney. Secretary of State, Governor, Mayor, Sir, Ma'am, and even Mr. President. You were their greatest dream. You are their best revenge yet. So they scrubbed white people's floors and they sat on separate toilets. They studied in separate but equal classrooms. They read tattered hand-me-down textbooks. They were trampled on the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, and they marched for miles and they boycotted racist bus systems. They bit their lips in silence and they were bitten by police dogs and treated as if they were dogs themselves. But they held their anger. They held their tongues and at time held their peace because they held your generation inside like an expecting mother, not willing to deliver prematurely because the world was not yet ready for your brilliance, your intellect, your heart, your voice, your style, your strength, your insight, your leadership until now. Don't you get it? You're our dream. You're our future. You're our legacy. You're our children. We know it gets hard at times, but baby, don't give up. We believe in you. We believe in the people who dreamed of you. So be strong. We've waited for you. We saw and look forward to this day. You're the ones we've been looking for.